There are scores of footwear brands in the world, but few hold as much cachet in sports, fashion, lifestyle, and popular culture as the one with the three stripes. With a legacy that spans nearly seven decades, Adidas has had its ups and downs in the sneaker market. To catch you up to speed, we compile the list of the things that you should know about Adidas. To test your knowledge or learn a thing or two, check them out. In this video, we're gonna show you 10 crazy facts about Adidas that you probably didn't know. We're Only Brands, the channel dedicated to bringing you awesome, regular content on the world's hottest brands. Let's do this. Number one, the brand was born out of a sibling rivalry. After working together for years at the family company called Gebruder Dossler, Adi Dossler and his older brother Rudolf began to bump heads. They split the company and its assets and, in the late 1940s, formed two separate companies, Adidas and Puma. The feud carried on for decades, up until a symbolic soccer game in 2009. Number two, it was almost called Adidas. The company's founder and namesake, Adolf Adi Dossler, wanted his brand to be called Adidas after the split with his brother Rudy. But according to Barbara Smith's book Sneaker Wars, his registration was turned down because there was already a German children's shoe company with that name. The addition of a single vowel made all the difference. Similarly, his brother wanted to register his new company as Ruda, but it was thought to be inelegant and plump, Smith wrote, so he went with Puma instead. Number 3. Adidas Production The company has come a long way since Adidas made its first shoe. The Adidas Group produced 340 million pairs of shoes in 2021. However, 2021 figures are significantly lower than those recorded in previous years. In 2020, the company produced 379 million pairs. In 2019, Adidas made 448 million pairs of shoes, 39 million more than in 2018 with 409 million pairs. In 2017, the company produced 403 million pairs of footwear, showing a gradual increase in production during pre-pandemic years. Surprisingly, Adidas outsources nearly 100% of its production. Statistics reported by the company show that almost 100% of production is outsourced to independent manufacturing partners, but this is common practice for large companies in order to meet consumer demand. Around 71% of Adidas partners come from Asia, a slight increase from 2020 when Asia represents represented 68% of the group's manufacturing partners. In 2021, Adidas partners were producing in 234 manufacturing facilities. Official information shows that in 2020, the company had 277 manufacturing facilities. Since then, it reports 114 independent partners for manufacturing, a slight decrease from 132 partners in 2020. 65% of the company's partners have been working with Adidas for a decade. The brand creates a strong and competitive company by maintaining long-term and trusting relationships with its partners. One of the more interesting facts is that around 35% of its production partners have been with the company for over 20 years. In addition, 30% of the manufacturers have been in cooperation with Adidas for 10 to 20 years, and almost 35% of the partners have been working with the company for less than a decade. By the way, a lot of hard work and care goes into these videos, so if you could help us out and click that lovely subscribe button, we would greatly appreciate it. Number 4. Jesse Owens was an early adopter Before the birth of Adidas, which is usually spelled with all lowercase letters in contrast to Puma's all caps, Adi's focus was on spiked shoes for sports, which was more or less early cleats, but with nails driven through the soles. During the 1936 Olympic Games, Adi knew that German athletes would be wearing his spikes, but he was determined to have the phenom Jesse Owens try them on, even though he would be competing against the Germans. After trying on a third pair, Owens was hooked. He stated that he wanted the shoes or none at all. The athlete proceeded to win four gold medals. Lucky trainers. Number 5. The iconic three stripes came from another brand. The world recognizes the three stripes as the trademark for Adidas now, but the stripes were not Dossler's until 1951 when he purchased them from the Finnish shoe brand Karu. Smith wrote that two stripes were used back at Gebruder's Dassler, so they were out and the four stripes seemed too busy. The story goes that Karu sold the trademark to Adidas for two bottles of whiskey and 1,600 euros. When Adidas expanded into apparel, it adopted the trefoil 
trefoil as its logo. The trefoil is a clover-like plant with three lobed leaves which fit with the brand's existing stripe motif. Nuremberg-based designer Hans Fick is credited with incorporating the stripes into the leaf logo. Number 6. Adidas Invented Shower Shoes According to the Adidas blog, the German football team came to the company in the 1960s because they wanted shoes for their players to wear in the showers and in changing rooms so that they could be protected from gross things that grow in those places. After a few design changes, what the world knows as the Adelette was released in 1972, it's still a popular choice for athletes and dorm dwellers. Number 7. Hip Hop's First Endorsement Deal Run DMC signed a massive deal with Adidas in the 1980s after endorsing the brand in songs like My Adidas. The hit was created in response to a poem from a doctor living in their neighborhood. Dr. Diaz, who worked at the Jamaica Hospital Medical Center in Queens, was tired of the violence he had to witness every day, and that's why he decided to reflect it in a poem. In it, he criminalized sneakers in general, especially the ones without laces, as a reference to the prisoners. The black Lee jeans, the castle sunglasses and chains. The poem called Felon Sneakers ended up becoming a rap song, Exactly a year after, Run DMC released the song My Adidas in protest. The goal was to vindicate that the Adidas were a form of expression and that they had a positive connotation. This was the very first endorsement deal in hip-hop history and laid the groundwork for future endorsement deals between brands and artists. When Run DMC released their first song in the year of 83, the Adidas Superstar was a basketball sneaker from 1970 that competed against the Converse All-Star to lead the court. The truth is that the superstars as we know them today are born from the Super Grip model, created around 1965, which are supposed to be Adidas' first basketball shoes. Run DMC's million dollar endorsement with Adidas paved the way for other non-athlete musicians like Missy Elliott, Big Sean, and Kanye West to sign with the brand. That was an especially juicy fact, right? I think that one definitely deserves a thumbs up. Number eight, the company could have signed Michael Jordan. According to the Wall Street Journal, Jordan wanted to sign with Adidas when he was drafted in 1984. Distributors reportedly wanted to make it happen, but executives wanted a taller player to represent the brand on court. Converse was ready to offer him $100,000 per year, but they didn't have any new ideas. Nike offered Jordan a $500,000 per year contract, which he took back to Adidas to see if they could come anywhere close. But the brand had to pass. Missing out on Jordan was, and still is, one of the biggest missteps in Adidas history. But the company had its share of smart plays too, as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar was the brand's first contracted basketball player, while tennis star Stan Smith made sales soar when he signed on and got a silhouette named after him. Over the years, dozens of other individuals across just about every sport or athletic event have inked deals with the brand. Number 9. David Beckham has a lifetime endorsement deal. David Beckham isn't just one of the greatest soccer players. He's also an impressive businessman who landed himself one of the biggest sponsorship deals in his career. In 2003, the father of four was in talks of signing a lifetime contract with Adidas, which would see him front major campaign and commercials for the German-based firm. It was later revealed that David had negotiated an offer worth a massive $160 million, becoming one of the biggest deals Adidas had signed at the time, though that number may have already been surpassed with the addition of superstar Beyonce joining the firm with her Ivy Park line in 2019. But it should be noted that while Adidas was paying David David a lot of money to continue promoting their brand for the rest of his life, there was an interesting clause in the contract that prevented him from getting the money all in one go. Signing a lifetime deal is a pretty big deal for many reasons. However, many celebrities wouldn't really want to lock themselves in such of a position as it ultimately prevents them from ever getting to work with other sponsored companies, depending on how the deal was negotiated. Number 10. There was an Adidas Kobe 3, but it never got released. Kobe Bryant is on his ninth signature sneaker with Nike, but before he signed with the swoosh, he had a deal with Adidas. It's easy to remember the Crazy 8, KB8 2, and Kobe 1, because they were all retro recently. There's one shoe though that most likely won't be coming back, the Kobe 3 which took design cues from the space age Kobe 2. It never made it to production besides a few samples. Thanks so much for sticking around until the end of the video. We hope you enjoyed it, but why stop now? Click this video right here for more awesome content.